Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Art 202, Art Appreciation. You are here for the Summer E2 class. So I apologize, we did start class yesterday on June 29th, and normally every week on Monday, you will see a weekly announcement video that I will uh, be going over what's going on for the week, uh, what to do, you know, a little more details on assignments, all that good stuff. This week's announcement will be slightly longer than normal because I'm uh, going over the syllabus, you know, how the class works, all that good stuff. But before I do that, I'll just uh, give you a little bit about who I am. So my name is Emily Boss. I've been teaching here at Cal Baptist for just over three years. This is a class that I just recently redeveloped. So uh, this is the first class I taught while at CBU. But since I've developed the uh, Art 204, which is the basic drawing class, and the Art 387, which is contemporary visual arts and culture, and just uh, about three months ago or so, uh, we completely redeveloped the Art 202 class. So it's a little more cohesive, uh, you know, flows a little bit better with the other two classes. And uh, I'm really proud of it. I think it's a great class. I've had good feedback so far, and I think that you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, so I grew up in Orange, California. I went to Villa Park High School. Uh, once I graduated, I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, where I received an associate's degree in interior design. I worked in the design industry for about five years or so, but in the midst of that, I decided I wanted to continue on with my education. And I went to Cal State Fullerton and ended up with a bachelor's degree in art history. Uh, end of my senior year of college, I got married. And then about a year later, uh, my husband and I moved to England so that I could do my master's degree. And I received my master's in art history from the University of Nottingham. So yes, uh, we actually lived across the street from the Sheriff of Nottingham for the first few months that we lived there. Uh, amazing experience, got to do a lot of traveling, uh, you know, see a lot of world-renowned, you know, museums and churches and all that good stuff. So, uh, great experience. My specialty really is in modern and contemporary art, so art from about, let's say, mm, end of the 19th century, mostly the 20th century is where my expertise lies. Uh, but I like to focus on giving students that breadth where we kind of, you know, pick from different time periods to give you a little bit of an overall picture. But mostly this class is going to be equipping you with tools for how to look at art. So a uh, little back to my story. Uh, so my husband and I, we lived in Corona, California for several years. My husband was on staff at Crossroads Church in Corona. He's a worship leader there. Uh, but recently, actually one year ago today, actually, we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. So we now uh, live in a different time zone, so I am two hours ahead of you. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're sending me emails, phone calls, all that good stuff that uh, when it's, you know, 8 o'clock in the evening your time, it's already 10 p.m. where I am. Uh, but we love being out here. Uh, we miss family and friends, but we, we wouldn't go back. We love Nashville. It's a great town. Uh, so I also taught for several years at Cal State Fullerton, which was my alma mater, and there I taught a very similar class, Art Appreciation. I also taught Writing for the Visual Arts and Modern Art. So again, that's kind of where my specialty lies. Uh, so that just gives you a little bit about who I am. Uh, I would love it if you would go in uh, to the discussion boards, and there's one on uh, introductions, and you can post an introduction about yourself so we can all get to know you a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look at the class. So in, if you're in Blackboard, if you click on the Art 202, this is how it should look. Uh, you should have you know, the title of the class at the top, all this good stuff. If you're new to CBU or if you're new at least to taking an online class, uh, there's you know, some things you definitely need to be aware of. First of all, this menu is uh, really important on the side. And also announcements here, I will always be posting for you. Uh, if there's anything, you know, if anything changes, anything I want you to know, uh, they will either be in these videos or they will also, you know, be in their own announcement. So let's go ahead and click on the syllabus and talk a little bit more about the class. I'll try to go through this relatively quickly. So here's our course description. This is an introductory class suited for both art and non-art majors. We will be investigating the creative process and the diversity of style, uh, techniques, and media that is evident in various art forms throughout history and across cultures. So this class is really going to be about teaching you how to see, how to look. Uh, it's a little bit different from an approach than a lot of traditional art appreciation classes where you spend 
the majority of the course learning about uh, elements of design and mediums. I like to focus on themes, so we'll talk about commercialism, we'll talk about patronage, uh, we'll talk about the body, we'll talk about the whole concept of context, uh, we'll ask questions, what is art, what is an artist, all of these things. So uh, I think it's a really cool approach and I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, there's a whole section on online learning, so make sure you read it through that. Here is my contact information. So this is my private uh, cell phone number, so please use with discretion. So, you know, again, I'm two hours ahead, so please, uh, if you do need to call me for anything, keep that in mind. But really, uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through email. Uh, I'm constantly checking emails. I do my very best to get back to any email you send me within 24 hours. Uh, if for some reason it's been 24 hours and I have not gotten back to you in an email, then please just send a follow-up one and say, hey, did you did you see my email? I just wanted to make sure that it went through. Uh, and usually, you know, I'll make sure I get back to you. Sometimes I get a lot of emails. Uh, sometimes one or two just fall through the cracks and or I think I answered it and I didn't, you know, it, it happens. So uh, just, you know, double check with me, but I am really good about getting back uh, through email. And of course, I don't have an office because I am... Uh, 2,000 miles away from you. So office hours really uh, don't apply to this class. If you'd like to set up a time to, you know, to talk, it's best instead of just calling me out of the blue, it's best to send me an email, say, hey, uh, can we set up a time? When are you free that we can kind of have a phone conference? That really is what works best with my schedule. Okay, required text and resources. Hopefully you already have your book. It's called Looking at Art. Uh, you don't need the one that has the, you know, DVD or CD attached. I got a, an email from a student a few days ago asking that. Uh, you don't need that. The good thing about this book is there's only one edition, and uh, even though it came out in 2003, there's just the one edition. So if you can find a used copy, absolutely go for it. Uh, I know it, it's just a small paperback book, and it's still new, cost around $60. That's just how textbooks work. Uh, but actually, I've picked a book that is uh, about half the price of a lot of art appreciation texts, so I hope you do appreciate that a little bit. But the good thing is we're going to read the entire book and don't think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to read a whole book in eight weeks. Uh, you're actually going to read it in six weeks. It's quite short. Uh, it's large font, so uh, don't, don't freak out. But it's a really good introductory text, and I subsidize that with lots of lecture material. Okay, there's course, uh, student outcomes, all that good stuff for you to read through on your own. And then the syllabus goes into assignment overview, so it talks about the different types of assignments that we will be having. So you will be having reflections every week, and these will either be journals, discussion boards, or blog entries. Uh, these are the equivalent of, you know, one to two pages, double-spaced, 12-point font in a word processing program, although you will write them just right into the, the text editor on um, in Blackboard, so you don't have to worry about file attachments for these. But these are all based on your opinion. So you can use first-person narrative, you can say I, me, my, all that good stuff. Uh, this is all based on your opinion of you know some of the material that uh, I'm going to be giving you to, to look at and discuss with each other. So this is a place where you get to kind of, you know, interact with your peer group uh, to, to kind of just get ideas and opinions out. And there will be other places where I will be much more strict and there'll be formally written assignments, but these are not. So they're kind of the antithesis of that. Okay, let's talk about some of the projects you're going to be having. Uh, you're going to be doing a deconstructions project where you're going to be analyzing work uh, based on uh, the uh, formal analysis, elements of design, vocabulary, genres, and art movements. Uh, all a lot of from the first several weeks of lecture material, so uh, we'll get into all of that. So you're going to be kind of breaking it down uh, into lists. So we're going to be deconstructing these works of art, and then after that, that's kind of a practice for the formal analysis paper, just a two to three page paper where you're going to be uh, looking just at the formal qualities of a work of art, and I give you three choices uh, for that assignment. And so you're going to be using elements of design such as color, shape, line, mass, space, all of these things that you'll be describing. Uh, so this, this paper is not based on opinion, but on observable truths. So it, that's something that's, you know, a little difficult for students to do is to start to, you know, look at a work uh, from an uh, objective point of view rather than just a subjective point of view. Okay, we're going to be doing an assignment called Out of Context, where you're going to get to, you know, imagine an artwork uh, taking place in a different time and place. 
uh, and how that might affect the audience that views it. Uh, you're going to be writing a film review on a very interesting documentary called Why Beauty Matters. You're going to be creating a collage and you're also going to be doing a self-portrait project. Uh, each week there will also be an artist of the week. Sometimes these will have an actual Q&A assignment attached to them. Sometimes they will not. They will be very clearly outlined which ones do. They're just quick 10 points, three little questions, you know, hey, what did you think, you know, about this film or what did you think about this artist? Uh, very kind of simple. So those are just short answer questions uh, that you will have in five of the eight weeks. And you will have a quick quiz each week uh, that goes over, you know, topics uh, covered in lecture, reading material, films, artists of the week, etc. And then you have your capstone project, so which is going to be a museum review. Start planning now for this. I recommend you go into week eight, you look at the prompt, and you set a date to go to a museum or art gallery. Do not wait until the last week of class and then be like, oh my gosh, I haven't gone somewhere, where am I going to go? Uh, I give you a whole list of suggestions if you're not in the area, if you're not in the LA, Orange County, and then Empire area, you're somewhere else, and there's somewhere you want to go, just say, hey, would this place be, you know, appropriate for this assignment, and I'll be able to tell you that or not. Okay, so there's a little section on assessment policies, all that good stuff. So this shows you how your grades are broken down. Our course is out of 1,000 points. We do a plus or minus grading system at CBU. Be sure you are checking your grades often on Blackboard. I uh, try on the major assignments to leave you ample feedback. I don't always on the discussion boards or you know quizzes, that kind of thing. Uh, but they're always, you know, always check for feedback because I often will give you, you know, hey, make sure you're doing this in your assignments. And if I see that mistake made repeatedly, uh, then I will be more likely to take more points off. So make sure you're checking your grades, checking your feedback. And then uh, it goes over the course schedule. All assignments are due on Sunday nights at midnight. So Sunday, 11.59 p.m., just to make it that it's not Monday at midnight. It's, it's you know, the end of the day, Sunday, before 1 a.m. Monday morning. Uh, so Sunday nights, end of the day, is when your assignments are due. Our weeks start on a Monday, so Monday is day one, and Sunday is day seven. So everything always due, again, uh, end of the week. So I'm just reiterating that. The only time that changes is in week eight. At uh, CBU, in our online program, our courses end on a Sunday night. By Monday at 4 p.m., uh, instructors have to submit final grades, which means we have less than 24 hours to get your final grades submitted. So if we were to let you submit all your uh, final assignments Sunday night at midnight, uh, that wouldn't give us very much time to grade those capstone projects. So they are due on Friday, only during week eight. So keep that in mind. Without fail, every single class I teach, I have students that Friday comes along, they haven't turned their work in, I mark them as zeros, and within a few hours I'm getting emails. I didn't know, I thought everything was due Sunday like it normally is. So don't let that happen to you. Make sure you're reading the syllabus, that you're checking the announcements, checking the course agenda, all that good stuff because I always try to make you very aware of this. So again, week eight, due Friday. Every other week, everything's due Sundays. Okay, there's a section on professionalism, how I expect your work to be written, regular effective contact that we try to get back to you within 24 hours when we try to get grading done to you. Uh, late assignments, 10% deduction every day an assignment is late, and I am, I, do count things late. If you turn it in late and you haven't contacted me uh, to let me know what's going on, it's going to be marked down. Now, I understand that you're taking online classes because you might have a full-time job and a family and kids and life is busy and you're doing this because we tend to have a little grace and we can be a little more flexible and you get to work on your own schedule. Life happens. I get it. Kids get sick cars break down, work deadlines change. So as long as you keep me in the loop, let me know ahead of time, you know, if it's Sunday night at, you know, 1030 and you're emailing me that, you know, oh, I, I need another couple days, uh, it's a little inconsiderate. Uh, or if you, you know, let me know after it's already late. Uh, that's my biggest pet peeve. Don't email me after an assignment is already late and say, oh, I couldn't get it done. 
just let me know ahead of time, even if it's Sunday afternoon, just say, you know what, this happened. Uh, is it okay if I submit it by Monday night? 99% of the time I'm going to say yes, but I expect you to extend the courtesy to let me know what's going on so I expect when your assignments will be coming in because that impacts my schedule of when I sit down and grade work uh, and then I have to grade work at a separate time if it's late. So uh, it's just courteous and again, I will extend grace to you if you you know keep me in the loop and let me know you know what's going on and, and why your work's not in. Okay, there's a section on netiquette. There's a section on academic honesty. I used to think I didn't have to go over this, but uh, I, believe it or not, have had students copy and paste right out of Wikipedia and turn it in. Uh, don't do it. I will absolutely catch you. Most of your, uh, your written you know, papers, your formal analysis, your film review, all that stuff is submitted through SafeAssign, which checks for plagiarism. Just don't do it. It doesn't reflect well on you. It doesn't reflect well on the university. You can get uh, kicked out of the class. You can get kicked out of the program. You can get kicked out of the university. It's a really big deal, and we take it very seriously here at CBU. So just, uh, it's not worth it. Don't do it. Make sure you're citing work, uh, any research that you do in your work, uh, and we won't have a problem. And that's about the nastiest I will get all, uh, all session. Um, I'm really big on this. It really makes me very upset. Uh, and I will most likely just right away give you zero on the assignment, no other choice. You know, you can't redo it. So don't do it. And uh, we'll, all, we'll all be peachy. Okay, so if you jump into the learning activities, this is what we look like here. So it has each week, it has a little, this is new. They just changed it so it's got an ex excerpt from your lecture and... Um, it talks about some of the objectives that we're going to be going over. Uh, it mentions one of the assignments due, and it always kind of pulls up images from lecture. So a little bit fun the way they've done that. By the way, discussion boards are at the very bottom of the learning activities. And again, the introduction, oh, it looks like nine of you have already posted in there, so I need to go in and check those out. Uh, don't even bother with this Q&A. Just email me. I don't really check this because it doesn't pop up that, oh, there's a discussion someone posted in the Q&A. Uh, just send me an email if you have a question about something. But uh, yeah, I'd love to meet all of you through this. So let's go back to the learning activities here. And let's go to week one. And normally this is where your announcement video would be starting. So again, every other week they'll be much shorter than this. So every week there's going to be a weekly agenda and it gives you a little um, you know, information about what we're doing. So this week has a little introduction. So. This is an introductory course suited for both art and non-art majors. We will investigate the creative process and the diversity of style, technique, and media evident in various art forms throughout history and across cultures. Be prepared to think critically. Look outside the box of what you've always understood art to be. During the next eight weeks, we will explore works of art spanning hundreds of years and learn how it is still relevant today. So each week I will post an agenda and I will post a video as well uh, that will give you, you know, what activity need, activities need to be completed along with any assignment deadlines. If you have any questions about the assignment instructions, have any technical difficulties, or simply want to comment on something you've learned, do not hesitate to email me right away. There's nothing I love more than when a student just sends me an email and say, hey, I just really found this interesting this week, or I have a question about you know what the author was talking about in our textbook on this or or what this artist was talking about in this documentary you know or any of that stuff it just makes my day i love that and i love to get to know you guys too so that's a good opportunity uh hint hint to just you know butter me up a little bit is to uh let's build a relationship a little bit okay so we have a reflection so you have a journal this week uh you have some reading to do you have a lecture you have an artist of the week with Q&A, and you have your first quiz. So again, all assignments do no later than day seven, which is Sunday at midnight of the current week. Remember, all weeks begin on Monday and on a Sunday. Okay, let's jump in. So your first reflection. So this is going to be a journal entry. It's titled, What is Art? And I expect you to do this pre-instruction. So before you do any of the reading, before you look at the lecture, just go ahead and write this. Just get it out. As long as the grammar and spelling isn't absolutely terrible and unreadable and you've written on the prompt the right length, turn it on time, you're going to get full credit. That's just how easy these assignments are. So 
Use the text editor, one to two pages, double space, 12 point font, discussing your current definition of art. As if you were explaining the term to a person who has never heard it before, explain the meaning of art and its purpose according to your own personal philosophy. So I want you to consider what qualifies as art, what may not qualify as art in your mind, in your definition. And this is an opportunity to voice your open, honest perspective, no judgment from me. This assignment is to be completed before any other portion of the class has been, and before you've looked at anything else. And it's going to serve as a litmus test for your growth, broaden your understanding of the subject, and we're actually going to rewrite this at the end of the class. And it's really cool for you to look back and see what you thought eight weeks ago and what you've learned and how that definition may have stayed the same, how it might have changed. So just to give you a little idea, and I won't do this every week, but how these entries work. So when you click on it, it will give you the prompt again. You can just hit create journal entry. You can give it a title. What is art? And then you can just say you were you wrote it in Word. Uh, you can copy and paste it right in here, or you can type it right in here. This you don't need for these assignments. Do not attach anything. Just put it in here. I can always tell who has and hasn't watched these videos when people uh, submit attachments. So don't worry about it. Then you hit post entry and you are done. It's that simple. Let's go ahead and go back. So again, uh, this is due Sunday at midnight, but I recommend that you do it as soon as possible. Just get it done, get it out so that you can get to the other step. Okay, reading lecture and quiz. So let's go over this. So you are going to be reading uh, in your looking at art text, chapters one and two, and then you have your lecture slides. So you can download the slides here by clicking right there on that PDF, and they will pop up for you as soon as they load. They look like this. Uh, a lot, oftentimes I include links to little videos that I want you to watch, and so I always, you know, highlight them on the link, you know, here and there, and uh, sometimes there aren't any for pages and pages, and then, oh, there might be one again. So just make sure that you're clicking on these, uh, and that way you can watch the little YouTube clips, etc., that I attach there for you. So download the lecture slides, but then what I've also done is I record a lecture of me going over these lecture slides, so you can go ahead and view that along with the lecture slides. I also give you vocabulary listed that is uh, relevant, that might pop up in your quiz, that when you're going through lecture, these words pop up, make sure you pay special attention to them. So if you click on this, uh, it will take you to your quiz. So you can hit begin. Uh, you have as long as you want to take them, but you only have one attempt. So you have to do it in one sitting, but you can take as long as you want. So you can use your notes, you can use your book. For me, quizzes are really about uh, making sure that you're doing the reading and uh, watching the lecture material, that you're not just thinking you can get away with not doing it. Okay, Artist of the Week is Vincent Van Gogh. So I have a documentary uh, called Vincent Van Gogh Painted with Words. Excellent, excellent documentary. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch stars in it. He plays Van Gogh. It's called Painted with Words because every word that you hear Cumberbatch speak and the other characters in the documentary speak is directly from the letters between Van Gogh and his brother, Van Gogh and his parents. Uh, whoever it might be. So they're all words from the artist's mouth. It's beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, so enjoy watching that. I always get a lot of good feedback from students on this documentary. And then you're going to answer these three questions. How is Van Gogh's work influenced by his religious convictions? What part of Van Gogh's story did you find the most relatable? And if you can say anything to Van Gogh or ask him any question, what would it be? And so you can submit questions by using the assignment text editor or by attaching a, a, um, a word processing document. I don't really care, although I do prefer on these assignments just because they're so quick. Uh, just hit write submission, text submission. One, two, three. And type your answers up right here. You know, I'm looking for, I don't know, three, three to five sentences tops on each of these, uh, at least three sentences, you, you know, give me a little more than just one sentence. But these are just quick, don't, you know, you don't have to write an essay, they don't have to be huge paragraphs for each one. Uh, just, you know, a little bit, I just wanna make sure that you're thinking about these things and you can hit submit and you're good to go. 
So that's what we've got going on this week. So again, your reflect journal, uh, do that before you do anything else. You have your quiz uh, and you also have your artist of the week video. I recommend always doing the quiz last because uh, watch the artist of the week video, watch your lecture material, all that good stuff before you uh, take a look at the quiz. But that's what we've got going on. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, any concerns at all, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm, I'm here. I'm your biggest advocate. I want to see you guys enjoy the class and do well. So have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend, everyone. And I will be talking to you soon.